This message tonight I'm going to minister to you is something that I believe that will become foundational to your spiritual life. We live in a time of great compromise, of great deception, and of a great falling away even in the church. Yes, even in the church. The enemy has assaulted the body of Christ with deception. And there are people whose roots don't go deep. And because their roots don't go deep, when trials come, when opposition comes, when the world threatens their faith, they're gone. Lord, don't let that be me. Paul the apostle said, lest I become myself a castaway. Paul wrote that. What you're going to hear tonight is something the Holy Spirit wants you to hear. Take very seriously the word of God. Take very seriously the word of God. For if you are not rooted in the word of God, you are easy prey for deception. And so I want to minister a word tonight in my prayer is that this message will stoke the fires of your love for Jesus. That you would be so passionately in love with Jesus that you would carry what the martyrs carried. That you would carry such a love that no request is too much. No sacrifice too great. No command is too difficult. I pray that your love for Jesus would be a mighty force that would overcome even yourself. God, help us to be people who love Jesus more than anything else. What does Romans 5.5 5 say? The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. There's no one on earth who loves Jesus more than the Holy Spirit loves Jesus. And it's my prayer that the same love with which the Holy Spirit loves Jesus would be our love too. That everything in us would be for him. My goal today is to agitate your holy jealousy. That you might say, Lord, I want to know you more. I don't want to be on the outer circle, Lord. I want to be on the inner circle. Jesus loves us all equally. I want you to know that. Believer, Jesus loves each and every one of us equally. But he can only trust you in proportion to your obedience. It's one thing to say Jesus loves me. It's another thing to say Jesus trusts me. You want to walk in his power. You want to carry the glory on your life. You want to be a mighty weapon in the hand of the Father with which he brings destruction to the kingdom of darkness. Then he has to be able to trust you with his power. In life, your passion for the Lord does not have to ebb and flow. I think all too often we buy into church culture myths cliches, and we say things like, well, I'm in my backsliding phase. Saying I'm in my backsliding phase as a Christian is like saying I'm in my cheating phase as a spouse. There's no such thing as the cheating phase. There's no such thing as a period where you can go and do whatever you want to break that covenant. No, when I'm redeemed by the blood of Jesus, I'm in covenant with him. I want nothing and no one else to move me from that place. I want to know him, and I see in Philippians 3.10 this verse, and when I see it, everything in me burns to have what the writer is talking about in Philippians 3.10, that I may know him. That I may know God. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. You have to know him before you know his power. And the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. This is the mystery of the fellowship of his sufferings. 
You know, Jesus has an inner circle. Much like I pray you have an inner circle. You're not going to announce on Facebook some of the things you would only tell your spouse. Some of you do, and we call that drama, but that's a different sermon for a different time. But you're not going to announce to the world those things about you that are only known through intimacy, the way you think, the way you feel, your insecurities, your hurts, your worries. Those are things you reserve for those who know you intimately. And let me tell you something, though we may not like to hear it, Jesus is the same way. I have my inner circle. There are things I will tell certain people. There are things I will trust with certain people. But if I were to announce it, you would say, huh, he's got issues. And that's true of everyone. You see, there are invitations that Jesus has given to the church. Invitations that Jesus has given to the world, really. If you can just follow him, he draws you deeper and deeper into his heart. In John 1, 39, we see that Jesus says, come and see. And this is his first invitation. Come and see. This is where the sinner becomes a saint. This is where the one with a broken marriage, the one with a broken body, the one with a fractured mind can come to him and see that Jesus is the deliverer, that Jesus is the healer, that Jesus is the savior. But this is where many people get stuck. And for the rest of their lives, they go from deliverance to deliverance, all the while never really surrendering to Jesus. They go from experience to experience while never maturing in their faith. They want to come and see, and they want to get just close enough to be comforted, not close enough to be challenged. I want to come and see the miracles, and that's wonderful. I want him to restore my marriage, and he'll do it. But Jesus sends out another cry, another invitation that we see in John 1, 43, just a few verses later. This is where Jesus says, come, follow me. Now, this is the change of direction in your life. And for some of us, this is actually a better situation than we had before, which is why it's so easy to follow Jesus when you're a new convert. Because it's not that difficult to give up darkness for light. But it is difficult to give up self for him. When I first get saved, you mean Jesus will take away my addiction? You bet. You mean Jesus will heal my body? Absolutely. Jesus will restore my marriage? Yes. He's a miracle working God. Come and see. But at some point, he will say to you, come and follow me. And this is the point where we change directions now. It becomes a little inconvenient, but at the beginning, this is much easier than it is toward the end because we still are in that infant stage. Yeah, I'll give up my drug addiction for your joy. Yeah, I'll give up my confusion for your peace. Absolutely. Following him will bless you. But at some point, following him will confront your selfishness. It's then that he says to you, after saying, come and see, Lord, thank you for touching my body. Thank you for touching my life. After he says, come follow, there's a challenge that arises because as we follow Jesus along that path, we begin to recognize that there are things in our lives that contradict his will. Too many in the church are preaching how to build your dreams, how to build your life, how to get everything that you want accomplished, and they give you 12 steps to this and that, and they're trying to teach you how to build what God told you to crucify. The promise of the gospel is not come follow me and I'll make all your dreams come true. It's come follow me and you're going to crucify that will. 
He says, come, follow me. And as he says, come, follow me, along that path, there are some things that we find as obstacles and we begin to hesitate. And there comes a point where after he says, come, follow me, he gives to you the third invitation. Come and deny yourself. Everyone wants to hear, come and see. Some love the come follow me. Very few celebrate when he tells you to deny yourself because it's never anything that's going to be easy for you. Denying yourself means just that denying yourself, your desires, what you want. Matthew 16, 24 through 27 says, then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world, yet loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. This is the death of self. So many are saying, fill me, Holy Spirit. And he's saying right back, I can't because you're full of yourself. They say, take my life, Lord. By that, they don't mean take my life. What they mean is make it better. We talk about breakthrough, and breakthrough in church lingo today is simply code for the day I never have another struggle again. But those who will respond to that call to come and deny yourself will hear that fourth and final call. Matthew 25, 21, his master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. One of these days, you're going to hear those words. And I want to stand before him knowing that I gave it all. I'll tell you, when your concern will not be based in the things of this world. When you look into those eyes of fire, all that will matter to you in that moment is what you did for him. You see, the crowds come and see. It's one group. They come to see the miracles. They come to hear the message. There are spectators in every crowd who simply out of curiosity want to catch a glimpse of what people say is happening. But amongst the crowd are people who will never draw closer to him. They hear about the miracles, they want the experience, but they don't want the sacrifice. John 2, 24 through 25, this is what the Bible says about Jesus' thoughts about the crowds. Listen to what it says. But Jesus didn't trust them because he knew all about people. No one needed to tell him about human nature, for he knew what was in each person's heart. Come and see. That's the crowd. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with coming to Jesus with an issue or a problem. I ministered a message which will be released soon on the fact that God wants to give you signs. We've been taught that it's immature, unspiritual, doubtful, selfish to ask God for signs because we quote that scripture, a wicked and adulterous nation demand, uh, uh, generation demands a sign. But Jesus was talking to Pharisees there, and he was very specifically challenging the fact that they had hard hearts. But all throughout the scripture, God wants to give signs to people. Come follow me, is what he says to the next group. Now, if you're in the crowd, 
You're following Jesus at a distance. You're there and you're close enough to get a miracle, not so close to be challenged. And we follow him amongst the crowds. Thank you for what you're giving to me. We eat the bread that he multiplied. We receive his healing touch. We watch his power. We stand in awe. And then, if we follow the next command, if we respond to the next invitation, we move in even closer. And there we see the 72 disciples. Jesus says, come follow me. Now, consider the fact that there was people among that group who didn't necessarily follow Jesus for Jesus. Think about the fact that even among the 12, there was a betrayer among them named Judas. I think it's safe to say that among the 72, not everyone was sincerely following him. I'm sure there were some among the 72 who loved Jesus. But if even the 12 had a betrayer among them, it's safe to assume the 72 was filled also with those who were insincere. These are the people who pursue the power of God with no love for the presence of God. All gifts, no glory. They can demonstrate his power, but they don't walk in his presence. What does God say to those who do this? Depart from me. I never knew you. Now, guys, hear me when I say, Everyone who begins in ministry that loves Jesus begins with sincerity. If they love Jesus, one of my greatest fears is that I would become a performer instead of God's servant. And if you don't think it could happen to you, you're in danger. You think it's easy to stand on a platform that reaches hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people and not have a little issue with pride? Let me tell you, there's such a thing, and I'm not saying this literally, there's a phrase that we hear going around these days. It's a new phrase, so it's probably from TikTok. But they say some people are possessed by the clout demons. People who follow Jesus, not so that he can use them, but so that they can use him. Do you know what the message translation says when it comes to that text in Matthew 7? Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. And then it says this, all you did was use me to make yourselves important. God, help us in this day and age of influencer culture. Hear me now, servant of God. Preachers are servants, not celebrities. Yeah. We're called to go and be among the people. We're called to go lay hands on the sick. We're called to go to those who are demon-possessed. If people can't reach you, it's because you're not called, you're in a career, and you need to repent of your pride. If people can't come to you, if people can't be served by you, if you care more about crowds than you do about people, find something else to do. Competing for likes and wanting the platform, I rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus. This generation is turning, turning into Simon the sorcerer. Let me buy this power that when I lay hands to, the Holy Spirit might flow through me. What did the apostles say to him? They said, you have, you're, you're bitter with jealousy. And, and these preachers who get into ministry to compete instead of soul winning, they're on the wrong track. Guard your heart, servant of God, lest you too become corrupt by this influencer culture. You can't pay a registration fee, go to a conference, and then come out with the anointing. 
You can't buy an online e-course on how to do this or how to do that, pay that money, download the material, fill it out, pass the test, and then walk away anointed of God. The power of the Holy Ghost is found only in the presence of the Holy Ghost. I've been in the back rooms, the green rooms, ambitious, hungry, self-centered people jockeying for position, trying to get to the top, passing out their ministry cards like business cards. You're not called to a new level of favor just because you took a selfie with the famous preacher. You're not called of God just because you're good at marketing and can garner a following online. You're not called of God just because you bought the camera equipment. Can I just be real with you tonight? The problem is, the internet has given the ability for anyone to have a platform. And so what's happening is many preachers, men and women, are skipping the process because they have immediate access to a platform. That's the 72. Come and follow. Okay, I'll follow you. So long as it benefits me. I'll follow at just the distance so I can carry your power, but I don't want to carry your cross. I'll follow you so that my gifts can be stirred and people can be wowed at how I'm being used, but I don't want to get so close as to actually be called to do something that will inconvenience me. The question is, are you using the Lord or is the Lord using you? That's what it means to be stuck in the group called the 72. You can do what Jesus did, but that doesn't mean you know him. Come and see, that's the crowds. Come and follow me, that's the 72. Come deny yourself, that's the 12. Now this is where Jesus begins to really challenge the selfishness in you. When I first started in ministry, I remember lying on the floor for hours. And I would pray this prayer with such passion. I would say, God, there's a little selfishness in me. Please don't promote me until you kill that. Here's the problem. You can cast out demons, but you can't cast out the flesh. The flesh doesn't come and go. The flesh shrinks and grows. And you have to keep the flesh subjected and weak. You have to keep it there. Because if you don't, it will overpower you. If you don't, it will take from you. If you don't, it will pollute what God is doing in you. God crucify those things. I prayed, Lord, let my hands be your hands. Heal through them. Lord, let my feet be your feet. Take me where you want me to go. Let my ears be your ears. Let me hear your voice with such clarity that if you whisper in the spirit, I can hear you loud and clear. Father, let my eyes be your eyes. I want to see things, people, and situations the way you see them. Let my mouth be your mouth. I want to speak the truth, even when it offends, even when it makes me, un uh, when people start to dislike me. Cancel culture rearing its ugly head. You can't cancel the gospel. And once you've denied yourself, there's this point that comes where he says, come and share, come and share. Come and share in my happiness. Come and share in our reward. To share in his reward, you must first be willing to share in his suffering. Think about the fact that it was only the three, Peter, James, and John, who went with Jesus to various places. 
When Jesus went to raise Jairus' daughter from the dead, it was Peter, James, and John that entered the room with him, and he threw everyone else out because he trusted them to be there for that moment. When Jesus ascended to the mountaintop and he was transfigured in the fullness of his glory and he was seen with Moses and Elijah, when the disciples who were there caught a glimpse of him, his image changed and he began to beam with light. It was Peter, James, and John who saw him on the mountaintop transfigured. They come back down from the mountain and what did they find? They find other disciples trying to cast the devil out of a boy. If you're ever having trouble casting out devils, it's one of two things. Either it's the kind that only comes out through prayer and fasting, or you yourself are not being a person of prayer. If it takes you hours to cast out demons, it's likely because you're only spending minutes in prayer, when you should be spending just seconds casting out devils because you're spending hours in prayer. No one can fight the Holy Spirit like that. So these disciples are trying. We can't get it out of them. And then Jesus comes down from the mountain and drives that spirit right out. Only those who have been with Jesus on the mountaintop can cast out devils in the valley. Valley problems require mountaintop solutions. But who was welcomed up there? It was Peter, James, and John. Peter, James, and John were the ones who were welcomed to the mountaintop. Do you know where else Peter, James, and John were welcomed? In the garden. Moments before Jesus would be taken away to experience the anguish of the cross. Do you realize, friend, that Jesus was sweating drops of blood saying to his father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. It wasn't just the physical pain of the cross. It wasn't just the fact that they were going to drive nails through his hands. It wasn't just the fact that they were going to put nails in his feet. It wasn't just the whipping and the beating the crown of thorns, it wasn't just the sense of suffocating that he feared. It was more than physical pain that anguished him. Do you realize that when he was on that cross, he said two startling things that people often overlook. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? God the Father, turning his all-knowing eyes away from the Son. And Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. The Holy Ghost left him too. And there on that cross in the anguish of that physical pain, he experienced the culmination of all of our guilt, all of the loneliness. He felt it all in one moment. But he carried it not just for you, but for every man and woman who had lived or ever would live in a single moment. Forsaken by God, he received the fullness of the wrath of God. That cup was the cup of God's wrath. Poured out onto his son. No wonder he sweat drops of blood. And who did he bring? Peter, James, and John. And he says to them, could you pray with me? Just one hour. Think about the fact Jesus, the Son of God, asked them, be with me in this moment. You want, you want me? I saw you on the mountain. 
You're the son of the living God. I saw your glory. I saw you open the eyes of the blind. Jesus, you raised the dead. And you are asking me? Wait with me? Watch with me? That I may know him the fellowship of his suffering. There comes a point when he will call you to these places. In Luke 8.18, Jesus says that if you use well what he's told you, more will be given. And he was speaking specifically in Luke 8.18. You look at the context. He's talking about revelation of who he is. He reveals himself. Jesus, the Son of God, invites you to know him. When I first started in ministry, and believe it or not, it's almost been 20 years. I started young when I was 13, preaching all over the world. I was only released to share this a few years ago, in fact, when we first started these meetings. The Lord called me, and I remember one night, I'm seeking him in prayer. You know when you have those moments where you could, the only word I can use is his presence, there's just a sweetness to it. You know what I'm talking about? You, 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 you can't explain that. There's just a sweetness to him. You don't want to be anywhere else. You don't want to be with anyone else. You just want to abide. And I'm praying. And suddenly... I'm caught up in something, whether it was a dream or a vision, I don't know. And I don't say that to sound like Paul the Apostle. I, I admit I say that because I don't know if I fell asleep or not. A dream or a vision, I don't know. All I know is I saw a room filled with light. So much light it was difficult to make out the details. I saw only outlines of things. As I walked into this room filled with light, I saw before me an enormous throne. And sitting on that throne, I saw the outline of a man. Now you've heard people tell you, you know a vision is from God when you sense nothing but peace. That's not true. It's a nice church cliche but it's not true. Approaching this throne, I began to feel a heaviness, a weight, a pain. And the closer I got to this figure, the more I could hear this man was weeping. hear him weeping. And the Holy Spirit allowed me to feel just a slight heaviness, just a small sample of what he was feeling. And I began to weep and I began to shake. A heavy burden, I can't explain it. And I ask the Lord, what is this? What am I feeling? Why do I feel such sorrow, such anguish? And the Holy Spirit told me, he's weeping for his children. You want to know why I preach the gospel with such passion? You want to know where this fire comes from? 
It's because for every soul that is one to him, it's a tear being wiped from his face. Fellowship of his suffering. You want to know why I come alive? When we see souls being one. It's because I know that my heavenly father is rejoicing. You share in his suffering and he'll say to you, come and share in your master's happiness. I want to share in your happiness. If that's you, lift your hands, pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Ask him right now to make you worthy. Ask him to make you worthy to share in his sufferings. Lord, we want to be close to you. Jesus, we want to know you. You online, write it in the comment section. Say, I want to know you. Just write it. It's so simple. I want to know you. I want to know you. I want to know you. Tell him, I want to know you. Jesus. In this moment, please, no more people moving around. If it's an emergency, I won't call you out. But please, just for a moment. Everybody praying in the Holy Ghost. Let him draw you. There are those little things, those little things you must release. Doubts, hesitations, let it go. Give it to him. Tell him he can have you. Lift your hands and say, Jesus, you can have me. Take my life and use it for your glory and your name. Amen. Everyone standing to your feet, please. Hands lifted, eyes closed. Hands lifted, eyes closed. You watching online, just begin to worship with us. The presence of the Holy Spirit is here. Just once more, please pray in the Holy Ghost all across this room. Pray in the Holy Ghost all across this room. I believe, and Lord, I believe all things are possible. Lord, I believe. Tell them, Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. All are possible Lord I believe Jesus and Lord 
I believe. Lord, I believe. All things are possible. All things are possible. Lord, I believe. And Lord, I believe. And Lord, I believe. All things are possible. Lord, I believe. Just lift your hands now. Just say those words. Say, Lord, I believe. Jesus. Oh, just begin to worship him now. Forget about whatever is going on around you. Forget about your sickness. Forget about your pain. Whatever your request is, just lay it aside just for a moment. In just a minute or two, I know by the Holy Spirit that, that power that you felt move through this room so many times so faithfully is about to rush across this room and right to where you're watching right to where you're watching just begin to love him now just begin to worship him now we love you Jesus you are Lord you are God marvelous magnificent beautiful and heavenly Larger than life. You're larger than life. We give ourselves to you. We give ourselves to you. Something's happening here, church. Call upon the name of Jesus. Just call upon the name of Jesus. Whatever your need, whatever the miracle, just call upon the name of Jesus.
Here's what I want you to do now. By faith, because the presence of the Holy Spirit is here. You in this room and you watching online, place your hand wherever the pain is in your body. Place your hand on wherever the sickness is located. You do not need me to lay hands on you. I'm not your healer. There's only one who can make you whole tonight, and his name is Jesus. And the Holy Spirit is revealing him to many of you. Place your hand on your sickness now. And I'm going to pray a simple prayer of faith. And if you by faith will ask him, only believe, only believe all things are possible. It's so simple. You don't need to beg him. You don't need to give an offering. You don't need to enact a certain posture. Freely we have received, so freely we give. His power is present to make you completely whole. As I pray this simple prayer of faith, simply receive it by faith. Now is your moment you're moments away from your pain coming to an end. You're moments away and your suffering will be no more because Jesus is here. So Jesus, son of the living God, these are your children. And Lord, they are children of the covenant. For your word declares that you bore our sorrows. You took our grief upon you. Lord, we know that by your stripes we are healed. We thank you for the blood, Lord. And we announce to every demonic being, to every spirit of infirmity, you have lost your power in this place. Because in this place, Jesus is Lord. You foul spirit of infirmity. I, by the power of the spirit, step on your neck in the name of Jesus. And I declare that you have to right now let God's people go. In the name of Jesus, be made whole now. In the name of Jesus, receive the promise. Receive the benefits of the shed blood of Jesus. I rebuke arthritis. It goes right now in the name of Jesus. Cancer, you devil of cancer, you go in the name of Jesus. 
I come against diabetes. I come against heart disease. I come against problems with the bones and with the tendons and with the muscles and with the brain. Tumors, go. Skin disease, go. In the name of Jesus, come out of that wheelchair in the name of the one whom I serve. I command strength to come upon your legs right now in the name of Jesus. Let go of that walker. Cast aside that crutch. Begin to move by faith and step into the river of healing. We, the people of God, declare that by your stripes we are healed. Lift your hands and ask Him to heal you, church. The power of God is flowing. to begin to test yourself that's right you've got to move if there was a problem with your legs begin to move your legs up and down you're gonna find the pain is gone if you had growth or tumors anywhere check for the tumor now the power of God has touched you check your hearing check your eyes check your skin check your back check your shoulder begin to move out in faith right now and you're gonna find the power of God has made you whole if that was you if the Lord has healed you, would you just wave at me right now? Look at all these miracles all across the room. Look at that. Do it again. Wave nice and big. Nice and big if the Lord healed you. Look at all these people. Okay. Now I need to ask you a favor. And some of you are a little shy and I understand and that's okay. But I want to challenge you. Because when the Lord does something for us, we mustn't be selfish and keep it to ourselves. We must, for the sake of our brothers and sisters, testify of the goodness of God. If the Lord healed you tonight, that means you just waved at me. If that was you waving at me, come out of your seat right now. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And come line up right over here. Come out of your seat. Come out of your seat. If you were waving, come out of your seat. Come on, come on, come on and stand right over here and let's give the Lord a big shout of praise as those come to testify. If the Lord healed you, don't hesitate. Don't worry. You're going to come and testify and experience the power. Look at all these people, church, that were healed by God's power. And you online, I want you to do something simple for me. You online, just write, I am healed. I am healed. Those three simple words write it online so that I can see and give the testimonies. Now, there's a slight delay there, so that'll be a while before those come in. The rest of you, go ahead and take your seat just for a moment. I want to see what the Lord did. How many of you are looking forward to seeing what God did in these people's lives? A beautiful, rich presence of the Lord here. A beautiful and rich presence of the Lord. You deserve the glory, Ishmael. Steve, you deserve the glory. Let's just play it, gentlemen. You know why we play that right now? because he and he alone deserves the glory for every life that is touched. Only Jesus, only Jesus. I love it, man. I love it. David, come here for a second. Just you. Bring David on the platform. You deserve the glory and the honor Whoa, stand him right there. Pat, come with him. As we bless your holy name, you deserve the glory. Lift your hands, David. And the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship 
as we bless your holy name for you are great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you trust you, my friend. Get ready to start seeing miracles breaking out. Can you, can you sense them right now? What are you sensing? I just feel just, um, it's the wind. It's just the wind that just keeps hitting me. He's here. He's here. I'm getting the responses now. Richard says, I am healed. Be still and know, says, I am healed. Um, Borge, forgive me if I'm not pronouncing that, but says, I'm healed. Mateo, I'm healed. Elisa, I am healed. Larice, I am healed. Irene, I am healed. Islanda, I am healed. Marsha, I am healed. Priscilla, and May, and Sal, and Cassandra, and Armeco, and Brittany, and T look, 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 look. I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed. And to Jesus belongs all the glory. Wow. Okay, Ruben, what happened over here? I have Anna here for a couple of years now has had constant pain in her stomach that would just come and go, sharp pain. She said it, it's like a stomach ulcer. And she said today as she was worshiping, she said she just felt the pain dramatically leave like that. And how long were you dealing with that? Just on and off for like years. It's, it would go and come. And how bad was the pain? It was bad because it's just real like irritable, like you can feel it like up against my stomach. So what happened as you're worshiping? As I was worshiping, I just begin to lift my hands and receive the word of God that, you know, God is here in, the, in this place and that he was able to heal me and just instantly it was, it was gone. It was gone. Did you feel the Lord touch you? Yes. What did it feel like? It just, I just felt like his prince. Do more, 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 more. That's it, that's it. Sometimes they go all the way to the edge and you make me nervous. We had one lady come, she flew back, her shoes came off. Bring her here. But those look like they're nice and tight on there. Jesus' name. Will you all pray in the Holy Ghost just for a second? Reuben, get ready. Get ready. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we honor you. What happened with this gentleman? I have Phil here for two months now has had this pain in his left shoulder and arm because of an incident he was in. He said, he, uh, this was two months ago now, he said he had limited mobility. He wasn't able to lift his arm, move his shoulder properly. He said, today, the pain went away. So how far were you able to go before? Where would it stop because of the pain? Um, it just uh, was like, it was just like a weight on there, like that, you know. Was it painful? It was like, I, it was felt like something tore or something in my heart. Oh my goodness. And how long have you been suffering with this? About, uh, two months. And how high can you go now? Show people. What did you feel when he touched you? I didn't, didn't feel anything physical. The pain just left? I was just trying to believe, you know, I was just saying, I gotta believe, I gotta believe. I love that simple faith. You see that? Simple faith, only believe. Lift your hands, sir, now that you can. Close your eyes, lift your hands. Put your hands toward this man.
Keep praying for him, church. Father, manifest your power. Touch my brother in the name of Jesus. That's the power of God. That's the power of God. Whoa. Reuben, what happened? Digo, He's in there for a second. Let him marinate in that. This Go is ahead. Elda. For a couple of weeks now, has had constant body aches and pain and her shoulder as well. She said she thinks it's due to stress. She says so much that it causes her to have dizziness. And she said today she came believing for her miracle. She said she, said she feels no more pain. She said she felt the peace of God come upon her. And the peace of God is coming to your home as well. Pick her up. You see why I had you pray in tongues? There's a flow that comes. Peace of God is coming to your home. It's been your prayer. He says, you've been warring in the heavenlies. You've been warring in the heavenlies. And today, not only does God bring peace to your home and healing to your body, but he brings to life, activates a prophetic gift that's coming on you now. Thank you in the name of Jesus. That's the power of God on her, guys. Can we give Jesus a hand of praise? Ruben, what's going on? They got KB here. She said she got in an accident a couple months ago from exercising to where she fell and she injured her neck. And she said today she came believing for a miracle. She said there's, she has mobility now in her neck. She's able to move now. How bad was the pain? Uh, about 10. Out of what? Out of... I know, you meant it was high. I have a neck pain and my ankle pain. It's been three or four months already. I couldn't heal it. Now I feel so much better. Thank God. Thank God is right. You're saying it was pretty tough? Yes. What was it like having that issue? Well, I wish it go away every day. I've been praying to God, but I thank God that it I feel his power on you. What are you feeling right now? What do you feel it was it like? Tingling and uh, shingle. I like, uh, you know, like somebody touches me, you know what I mean? I can feel that. It's his power on you. Lord, touch this woman. Let this pain never, ever, ever come back in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Ruben, what happened? They got, I have Teresa here. Four months now has had pain in her stomach. She said, it's been like this uneasiness due to stress. She said, every moment, it's like something's moving. And she said, today God touched her. She said, she just felt the pain leave off her body as she was worshiping. <laughs> That's so awesome what he did for you. Isn't he wonderful? He's awesome. You know, this is the presence of Jesus here. Wow. Lord, touch her, I pray. That's his power coming on you. What are you feeling on you right now? Blessed. We serve a wonderful Jesus. A wonderful Jesus. Help them up. Uh, can you just sense it tonight? Really like heavy on the room? What do you think, guys? You got you guys want God to use you the same way? Come up here real quick. Get all, all, all of these guys, these five, or say one, two, three, four, five, six. Bring them up here. Patrick, help her up, please. Quickly now, guys. Stand right here and face the people. Come forward a little bit. Stand shoulder to shoulder, guys. That's the presence of the Holy Ghost you feel. You feel that? It's strong here tonight. Lift your hands, guys. Everybody, stretch your hands toward them. Let's pray God uses their lives in such a way that nations are shaken. Come on, everybody, pray in the Holy Ghost for them. 
Father, let there be an impartation tonight. Let there be a strong impartation that comes upon them. Just play it, Ishmael. We are standing on holy ground. Play it, play it, play it. Everybody keep praying in the Holy Ghost. Father, let your fire come on them in a fresh way. There's power here, guys. There's power here. Fire of God goes for you. Whoa. Whoa. That's the glory of God. That's the glory of God. The glory of God is here, church. Keep praying in the Holy Ghost. It's strong.
release it right now in the name of Jesus. I pray strength come back to your body right now. Received her healing. She said the pain left her body. And Jesus touched your body. Jesus touched my body. What are you feeling on you right now? It's the power of God. You're shaking. This is the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Lord, I pray you make her whole and make her family whole too. In Jesus' name. Hey, Reuben, no more. Bring him up. Bring him up. And just right here in this spot is fine. I sense a shifting here. Just right here is fine. This spot. Don't walk him over. What happened here? This is Felipe. He said he's had for three years now, has had breathing issues and also has had pain in his foot. He said today there's no more pain. What were your breathing issues like? Um, so I've had sinus inflammation for the last four years and then um, just post nasal drip and seasonal allergies. How do you know you're healed? Uh, I just, so I actually was waiting in line and I just felt it like opening up and clearing up and like the mucus was flushing out and then like, I don't feel heaviness on my right foot anymore. What was wrong with your right foot? Uh, I've just been experiencing um, heaviness on my foot, like on and off. Um, I, I wouldn't say it was a sprain or anything like that because I wasn't limping, but it was, um, yeah, it was definitely just feeling heavy. And to Jesus belongs all the glory. To Jesus belongs all the glory. Now, those of you watching online, this same power that's present here can go right through that lens and touch you where you are. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray your healing virtue flow. Touch each one, Lord, and let your healing virtue make them whole. In Jesus' name. And the church said, you know it's revival when I have to step, up, step over a bunch of people. Now before you go, we're not closing the service, so don't worry. In a moment, I'm going to switch gears. Now bring her up to testify. Get her story. In a moment, I'm going to switch gears, and I'm going to release some prophetic voices here tonight. Who are going to? I told them, just prophesy over as many people as you possibly can. And so they're going to release words of the Lord. We're going to hear this testimony first, and then I'm going to do something else, and then we'll, we'll move right on to that. So you watching online, stay tuned. I've already instructed the prophets to make sure to include our online audience. And if they forget about you, I won't. I'll say, time to give a word to someone online. So don't worry. You keep watching. Now is the time even to share. Maybe you're not subscribed to our channel. Subscribe. This is the Holy Spirit's channel. He can do whatever he wants to do with it. And this is such a precious move of God. This is such a precious move of God. Guys, this is not common. This is not common. This is special. This is something he's doing that's special. What happened, Ruben? Uh, this is Adina. Uh, I couldn't get her testimony. She said she's ready to tell you. What happened? You can stand right there. There's really nowhere else here. What was wrong with you? Uh-huh. And how about now? How about now, Isaac? Well, lift your hands. Touch this woman, I pray. Ooh. Pardon? She says she, she wants the power. She says, I want the power. I want the power. Well, just lift. Stop looking. Stop. Don't give you a tip. Stop looking at me. Close your eyes. And look to Jesus. Look to Jesus. 
experience his touch. I can tell you this, more often than not when they're looking at me, they're not gonna receive. And the reason is sometimes they're waiting for you to do something. It's nothing I can do, it's his power. But the moment you just look to Jesus, the power of God touches you. So let's, let's, let's clear these people off of the platform here. That's a whole ministry into itself. Hey, the guy in the sweater who's leaving, hold on, bring, bring him back. Come here for a second. You know, God really did something in you tonight. I'm not just saying this to say it. I really see a strong anointing on you. I really see a strong anointing on you. As I was having you come up, the Lord told me, he said, this is someone who spends time in the secret place. The Lord told me that. And as I was preaching, you're saying, Lord, I want you to trust me. Lord, I want you to trust me. He says, in the next six months, get ready. There's going to be a breakthrough. I think you're in ministry already. Something tells me you're already being used of God. But something that God's going to do in the next six months, my brother, what's your name? Then something in the next six months is going to break open and there's going to be doors and opportunities for you. And that was it. That's all the Lord wanted me to say. for round two in a few minutes. <laughs> wow. Those of you watching online and those of you here in person, I need to ask you to do something. I'm going to read a portion of scripture to you in our ministry. It needs your partnership. You know, Jesus said in Mark 10, after having his interaction with the rich young ruler speaking to his disciples he says something quite powerful he says I assure you already right off the bat that's Jesus saying this if you were to see Jesus standing there in physical form right there before you I mean you could reach out and touch the robe I don't know if he'd wear a robe today to be honest with you I see Jesus in jeans and like a t-shirt when he's relaxing with the disciples. When he's preaching, I think he would wear a suit. That's just me. Who knows? But what if you could, you could reach out today and, 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 and touch his t-shirt and he's standing in front of you and you know it's him because you can sense his presence and you know it's him because he knows all things about you and he leans over and he says, I assure you, I assure you, there's no higher authority there's, 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 no greater, there's no greater strength behind a promise. It's Jesus himself saying, I assure you, I got you. You know, I trust a lot of people, or who are around me at least. They say they're going to do something, I believe them. If Jesus says he's going to do something, I believe them above all. He said this, I assure you that everyone who has given up house or brothers or sisters. Some of you, your family turned on you when you followed Jesus. Some of you, you've given up material things for the sake of the gospel. Some of you, your parents disowned you when you said you'd become a Christian. Your friends abandoned you. It says, or children. Some of you, because your children aren't serving the Lord, there's tension in the home. But Jesus said, I assure you, you give up property or houses or brothers or sisters or mothers or fathers for my sake and for the sake of the gospel. Watch this. You will receive now. Say now. You will receive now in return a hundred times as many houses, a hundred times as many brothers, a hundred times as many sisters and mothers and fathers, family members, a hundred times as many children. A hundred times as many properties, along with persecution. You're not completely off the hook. But then 
he says this, and, and, and in the world to come, that person will have eternal life. You know what the King James Version says? It says, you'll receive 100-fold both in this life and the next. Meaning, Jesus himself is promising that whatever you do for the gospel, you're going to get back in this life and the next. And the next. I remember one time, when I, you know, when I first started preaching, the ministry finances were like this. It was like a roller coaster. So some months I was celebrating, other months I was interceding. Interceding all the time. But you know, sometimes you intercede more than in other seasons. And I remember there was this, this, this season in my life where, where, where Jess and I had just got married. We're, we're a couple. I still didn't have a consistent pay. You know, today, thank God, things are stable. I can count on income. And during this season, it wasn't like that. It was just kind of planning for every, every day. We just kind of had to adjust. Okay, we'll pay this bill in two weeks, and this one, we're here. Do we need water? Do we need electricity? You know, things like that. And so I'm praying because our rent is due, and we're short by $1,000. A lot to be short by. That's not a joke, especially for me at that time. That was like, it's a lot of money. And I remember just giving it to the Lord. I said, Lord, I'm going to give it to you. And I thought I could do one or two things. I can stay home. It was a Monday night because it was a like a men's meeting, a men's discipleship where the men gather and hear the word. And so I could have, I had two choices. I could stay home and worry and fret and try to plan. And, you know, I would use different skill sets to earn money. I would I would, you know, I would ghost write some of the books you guys read by some of the people you like. I wrote their books, you don't even know it. You're, they call me a ghost writer. In other words, they give me the concept, I write their book. And that's what I would do. But not everyone needs a book written all the time. Sometimes I would do different things like that to earn money. And I, I was like, I can stay at home. I can plan and plan and plan and try to make this happen. Or I'm going to go to church and I'm just going to worship the Lord and trust that he'll get it to me by tomorrow. I go to that service. And wouldn't you know it, they took up an offering. I, 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 I can't tell you how many times I've sat in the service, clenching my fist, saying, Lord, but this is, this is the last of it. And the Lord says, just do it. So I'm sitting in the service. I don't remember what I gave. It wasn't a lot, but it was a lot to me. And so I'm leaving, and the Holy Spirit tells me, I'm going to take care of it. I'm going to take care of it. I'm going to take care of it. I, was, I left that service not defeated. I was like encouraged. I'm like, he's going to meet the need right now. I don't know how. I don't know which way he's going to do it. I don't know who he's going to use, but God is going to meet this need. And I'm walking out of the church service through the lobby, leaving the building. I'm like, Lord, I'm leaving. Is there somebody here you're speaking to? And it was like a very slow walk. Okay, go in the parking lot now, Lord. But I'm in the lobby. And I see my different brothers were shaking hands, saying hello. And wouldn't you know it, a woman at a men's meeting comes to the lobby look, doing this, frantically looking around. She's like sweating. And then she sees me, she goes, oh. She runs up to me. She said, I had to come here tonight. And I had to see you tonight. But I don't know why. But God told me to give this, and I just can't. It's like it's pressing on me, and I can't not do it. She gave me a check, church. It was in the amount of $1,000, and the rent was paid. Today, you see this ministry for what it is, and it's no longer believing for a few thousand a month. It's, it's a multi-million dollar organization. It takes millions and millions of dollars to keep this ministry going and growing strong but you know what you're looking at today what you see online when you see it on tv or wherever you watch the events around the world i'm just telling you it's quite simple everything you see today in the ministry came about simply one step of faith at a time one step of faith at a time you see when you give to the gospel god takes notice of that and no matter what your struggle is, he'll meet the need. He will meet the need. He said, I assure you. So what I want to challenge you to do, church, is help this ministry meet its needs for the sake of the gospel. 
I'm not promising that if you give us $77, that in 30 days you'll be debt free. I'm not saying sow a special 2021 seed and you're gonna get 2021 vision. I don't even know if that's good. No gimmicks, no manipulation, it's simple. For every dollar you put in this ministry, we will steward that dollar to maximize its efficiency to spread the gospel, period. And so I challenge you, some of you in this place tonight can do more than others. Keep in mind that whatever's left over from this month, we take our surplus every month and we apply it to the new studio project, which is a multi-million dollar project. We need extravagant givers who believe in this ministry, who stand behind what we're doing, who wanna help us win souls, to give extravagantly, and for every single one of us, that's going to be different. But give in proportion to how God has blessed you. And the surplus that comes in this month to our ministry, we will apply a percentage toward that studio project. But we need your help. We must tell the world that Jesus saves. We have to do it. So you watching online, you can give on YouTube via the Super Chat, but it's even better to go to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. I'm gonna challenge you to do a gift of $25, a gift of $50. Some can do 100, some can do 1,000, some can do even more than that. And we ask you to do it in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus for his glory. You're gonna see some information come on the screens in just a moment, and that information is gonna tell you even here how you can give. But ushers, let's go ahead and begin to distribute those offering envelopes you're gonna take an envelope, pass it down. If you need an envelope, that means you're giving either by check or cash. You can also give by debit and credit card, but the, the slides up here that we're gonna see, Mr. Lay, if we can get them to put those up right here, you can use these slides, this information. You can go to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate, and that's how you can give digitally. We talk about wanting revival. We talk about wanting a move of God. Well, you're in one now. You're in one now. Now it's time to support what God is doing. What we have is special and precious, and it's very rare to see something exactly like this. This is a move of the Holy Ghost. So those of you online, again, davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. Go there now. I will see your names coming in if you're giving while we're live. Those of you in person, you can do it from your phone by likewise going to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. If you're writing a check, make it payable to David Hernandez Ministries. And if you're using the envelope, please hear me now. If you're giving with the envelope, make sure you fill out all of the information, name, address, email, phone number, all of it. And this is gonna go toward the kingdom. We're partnering together to see souls saved. We're partnering together to destroy the works of the devil. And I know that there are people giving online all over the world and I want you to know here, you in this place, we don't take for granted what you're doing. We know that as you give, you're doing so from your hard work. You're doing so as a sacrifice, and we thank you for that. We do not take that lightly. Everything that's given will go toward the gospel. Everything that you sow, we're going to maximize. So one more time, those of you online, go to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. It will take you no more than two or three minutes. And then after that, you can come right back to the live stream. We're not going anywhere. Two or three minutes, go online, sow something. Do something for the kingdom of God. And invest in the gospel. Invest in souls with us. You do that today and help us. Some of you could do a monthly partnership. In fact, there are many of you who are partner with us monthly. How many monthly partners do we have in this place? Look at this. It's because of that monthly support that we're able to continue doing what we do. So thank you to those of you who are giving. We don't take it lightly. I want you to understand that this is from your heart. You may be giving through the ministry, but you're giving to Jesus. This is only through the ministry, but to Jesus. And in a moment, I'm going to pray. I can already see Felipe, Delsa, Cindy, Roni, Adriana, um, Rachel, and I see uh, Kimball and so many names coming in, some of them here, some of them online. We thank you for your support. I see the super chat on YouTube. Thank you, Sonia, and thank you, uh, PLZR, that's your channel name. God bless you. Kelly, thank you for your giving. 
It's coming in from all over the world. And this is so beautiful because Morgan Whitlow, our dear friend, it's because people believe in the gospel. We're joining our resources together and we're saying, Lord, I trust you that you've assured me that whatever I give, you will return to me hundredfold, hundredfold. How many need just another minute or two to fill out the envelope? I think we're good. Go ahead and raise that envelope if you're giving. If you gave online, just put your hand in the air. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your people who are giving. I thank you for their generous support of this ministry. And I pray, Lord, that you would bless them for this. Bring promotions. Bring finances from every which way. Lord, they may not know how you're going to make a way, but you make a way where there seems to be no way. And I pray that every dream that's of you, every goal that's of you, every business, every ministry, every home that's represented in today's giving, that you would bless them exceedingly abundantly above all that they could ask or imagine. Lord, let them look back and say, I remember the day when I struggled and today I celebrate that I'm walking in God's abundance. Let them know that abundance. Let them know that favor. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And all who agreed said, Amen. The buckets are going to pass around as we're doing that. Let's get those chairs up on the platform, please, Patrick. And Pat, you stick with me. And they're going to get the chairs up. And we're going to bring in the prophetic voices here in just a moment. By that, I mean people who are going to prophesy, not like a singing group. That sounds like a singing group, huh? The prophetic voices. You online, stick around. I'm going to make sure they keep hitting the online community too. So here's how it's going to go. I'm going to sit with them right over here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do like a popcorn style prophecy. What I mean by that is I don't mean to disrespect the prophetic ministry, but I told them I want to maximize how many people we prophesy over. So what I'm going to have them do is 30 to 60 seconds, boom, 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 and they're going to keep switching off. So while one is prophesying, the other one's going to be scanning the crowd and seeing who, who's next. And they're just going to have you stand up. Once they ask you to stand up, stand up. They'll give you the word and then go rejoicing in what God has said. Get ready, guys. Get ready, get ready, get ready. It's going to be awesome. Okay. I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep all this with me, Patrick. I want to keep my Chinese book with me only because... I'm excited about it, but you can take everything else. You can have my iPad. I want the Chinese book. All right. Would you please uh, help me welcome to the platform two very anointed prophetic people. Well, we'll wait for the buckets to pass and we'll bring them up. I'll tell you a little bit about them. Uh, two very anointed prophetic people. We won't have time to interview them or go into the details, but Tim, I'm sure we have their information at the lower third. Okay. So if you want information on their ministry, you can rewatch the stream and their either a, a social media platform or their website will be right there at the bottom of the screen so that you can go and connect with their ministries, which I highly recommend that you do. Um, two very, very, not just accurate prophets, but pure prophets. Accuracy is great, purity is better. And so they're accurate, they're pure, they love Jesus, and they're here to minister the word of the Lord. First, help me welcome to the platform prophet Robert Sanchez. Also, please welcome along with them, Pastor Angela Vargas, or Prophetess Angela Vargas. Come join me. Now, Prophet Rob, it's your first time doing this with us. And Angela, you're, you're a veteran now. You've done, I think this is your third one with us. We almost had Raul Nunez with us. He wasn't able to make this one, but I'm going to start bringing in, like I said, I like to do this maybe quarterly or once every six months. I think we need the prophetic ministry here. So everyone, just take a moment. Just ask the Lord to speak to you. Father, let there be hunger in this room. You online, ask the Lord to speak to you. Lord, we thank you for your presence, your power, and your glory. In Jesus' name. So what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be looking at my phone, but nobody judge me, okay? I'm not like just texting. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm keeping track of the online community, kind of watching the reaction and seeing how they're going. And then from there, um, I'll also communicate with you guys. But So if I'm on my phone, I honor the prophetic, and I'm not just being like a church brat and staying on my phone, okay? So, Prophet Rob, just let's start it off. Find someone and begin to release the word of the Lord. Perfect. This, 
this lovely young lady in the front row with the gray, will you please stand, the gray blue? This is what I heard the Spirit of the Lord say. You might feel slightly out of place, but age is but a number. The Lord says you're young in heart and filled with spirit. You are a word of life and a carrier of glory. You are a mother to many, and what you do is you raise a people to a higher place with great love. I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, your love is infectious and it begins to drive away fear and remove doubt and destroy insecurity and bring forth life. The Lord says, continue onward because you will see a generation rise up and move in signs, wonders, miracles, and power because of the great love that drips from your mouth. So I release this into your spirit, says the Lord. Young lady right here in the front, could you stand? You, yes. The Lord said, this is a new day of worship. Worship is coming to you. There was a season not far from now that you was dry and you was pushing and you was pushing against the door. But the Lord said, today I unleash and I open the door. He said, you shall walk in divine prevenance. And the Lord said, daughter, you shall see my glory in your worship. He says, where I'm at is in worship. He said, this last week has been hard for you to just enter in into the church building. But he said, today you will look no longer behind you, but you will look in front of you. You will see the destiny that I call you to and you will be a worshiper in this next season of breakthrough. The next season of breakthrough. Hallelujah. There's a young lady, third row white with black hair. Will you stand? Third row in white. You're looking over your shoulder. Please stand. Please stand. Right there. Yes, you. No, third row. This is, yes, you. I heard the Spirit of God say these words, get ready, this is your crossover and stay over season. This will not be a season where you'll go through and come back. It's a season where you'll go and stand. I heard the Spirit of the Lord say these words, I'm gonna give you the power to stand strong in the midst of winds and oppositions. You will not one be one that teeters nor falls, but you will be one that will stand upright. For the righteous are like a palm tree. And I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, the righteousness that I placed in you is going to cause those that have lost their sight to find their way I will cause you to be like Zacchaeus and rise up and look from above and speak words of life and hope into a people from a clear perspective when you come down you will speak the word of the word of love and the word of life and those in whom you prayed for will be suddenly changed my hand is upon you and my hand will use you to bring your family unto salvation for my spirit has heard your cry and I've answered your prayers this day says the Spirit of the Lord the lady with the black shirt on. I heard the Lord, the one that drove from San Diego. I, I, know, it, I know it, I knew it. The Lord said, you're the one that drove afar. He said, I'm going to catch your family and I'm going to catch them up. He said, it's been a cry. You was driving on the way and you say, Lord, I need a word from you. My family is lost, but he said, I am found. He said, today is a day of divine catch. I will catch them by the horns of, and bring them to the altar. The Lord said, never stop praying. Believe. Today is the day of belief that I shall set the captive free. Hallelujah. I hear I hear the Spirit of the Lord wanting to speak to a gentleman by the name of Jonathan Walker. You're online. Jonathan, this is what I heard the Spirit of God say. He says, there has been many things that have caused you to be let down. But I am here to tell you being let down was not a difficult or a disappointment. He said it was the right thing that needed to take place. When Saul was trying to kill David, his wife released him down from the window. His down was a place of escape. I hear the Spirit of God say, Jonathan, the letdown that you experienced in this last season was really the route of your escape. The system of Saul that has tried to destroy you is going to fall, but your name is the gift of God. And he said, and the gift of God in you is gonna cause you to rise above it. Be not afraid nor dismayed. Know that my hand is mightily upon you to bring you through and to the other side. For surely my grace is sufficient. Rejoice for you're not the herd. You're the strong and you will conquer says the spirit of grace there's a lady that was online by the name of Ujala. I think she's in Pakistan. I heard the Lord say that even today as you was ministering, there was people coming in from different backgrounds of religion. The Lord said, I will cause all nations unto me, and every tongue shall proclaim that I am Lord. The Lord said, continue to proclaim the goodness of me. Continue to preach and continue to call the word of the Lord to be upon Pakistan. I'm going to cause a region to be turned around. I'm going to cause a people and a generation to fall to the name of Jesus. He said, I will call them to come to me and I will cause the stripping to come. He said, that land shall be called blessed. That land shall know my name that I am Lord. He said, continue 
you to preach the gospel. They will hear the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Straight in front of me right there, the lady in the greenish next to the lady in white, will you stand? You know, in the greenish. Yes. This is what I heard the Spirit of the Lord say. He says, this is your overcoming moment. But the Lord says, you have felt like you have been in the wilderness and you've seen it as a low place. But remember what it says in the book of Matthew chapter four. He says, Jesus was led up into the wilderness. The Lord said, what you saw as a low place is really a high place and it's the place where you learn how to talk back to the adversary. It's where you learn to open your mouth and speak. You grew up under a place where you were shh and told to be quiet. But the Lord says, I'm putting a sass in you and you will begin to talk back and you will bring down strongholds and you'll cross over into everything that I promise for this is the day of breakthrough rejoice for your prayers have been heard and my spirit is uh, is leading you to a higher place victory is yours rejoice 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 says the spirit of God the lady with the white jacket on right here you're right here yes you stand the Lord said, you're gonna be a mother to the motherless. He said, you will be one that wow. embraced women. He said, you was called even as a young age to embrace. He said, you have the mothering nature and he said, you will cause women to come to him in a, I, I saw you in the service just doing, um, doing the, as uh, um, uh, Evangelist Deacons was giving the, the message. I saw you was crying and weeping and the Lord said, daughter, you will weep at the throne for women. He said, you will call them by name and they will come in one by one. He said, I'm calling you to the mother, to the motherless. He said, daughter, never deny the call on your life. I even see you preaching. I don't know, do you do some kind of women ministry or preach or whatever? But the Lord said, you're going to begin to gather them around you and you're going to mother the nature in them. And he said, you're going to push them forward and they will know their identity. He said, open your mouth and proclaim the goodness of my spirit and watch and see. You shall see my glory in the clouds come upon them. Hallelujah. There's a lady straight out in front of me. She looks like she's wearing black. Looks like she has stressy pants and, and tennis shoes on with a, a bony tail in her hair. A ponytail. Yes, please stand. This is what I heard the Spirit of the Lord said. You came with a spirit of expectation. Come you on. came believing not only to yes. receive, but to hear what heaven is saying. I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, daughter, I have been waking you up between the hours of two and four in the morning. It's because I want you to cry out and say, speak, Lord, your servant hears. For this is your set season to hear the instructions of heaven, because I'm about to turn your family around. Around. This is a catalyst season, and I'm going to use you as a unique fire to cause those that have been stagnant to boil and to ascend. The word of the Lord is, this is your ascending season. This is the catalytic season that you will cause your family to rise up out of infirmity, out of pain, out of disappointment, and to become the strong. He says, you are a messenger to the gate beautiful. Even as Peter and John came to the man that was lame, they said, rise up and walk. Your family will rise up and walk through the gates and be miraculously saved by the fire that I placed within your belly to set them at liberty. Rejoice, says the Spirit of God. Young lady, all the way in the back. Young lady with the afro, all the way in the back. Yes, you. You. Yeah, you look back. Stand up. You. Yes, you. From the age of nine years old to the age of where you, uh, I see like around 30. You were always spoken to down. There was always word came to crush you. There was generational curses that came to bring you to a darkness. There was words came to humiliate you, but I come today and decree and declare the word of the Lord. You are more than a conqueror. You are called and chosen by God. You have the fire of God inside of you to break changes and cut down lineages. The Lord said, this is the day that I will cause your lineage to be blessed. He said, daughter, you will not look back and you will not speak words that will cause illness and cause sickness over your life. But the Lord said, today, I come to touch your body and cause healing and power over you. He said, you will be one that calls your family to declare the goodness of me. Every generation will be broken and every curse will be broken off of you. Heavy curse. <laughs> 
this gentleman, he's shaking his leg in the blue. Will you rise? This is what I heard the Spirit of God say. He said, this is your moment. You have needed not only a touch of your body, but you've needed freedom of your heart. The Lord says, I will raise you up and I will make you a father to your family. For there has been many disappointments in your children, but I'm about to turn the heart of your family back unto you. The Lord says these words, continue to press onward and upward and you will see those that have been struggling suddenly have a heart change and their hearts will turn affectionately towards you. For I am a God that heals and I'm going to make you a father that runs towards them. And as you run towards them, you're going to fall on their neck and kiss them and embrace them and equip them with the message of the gospel. My power comes to set your generation at liberty. Young man right here, you, you, the cameraman, you. I heard the Lord say, silence the voice in your head. He said, you keep trying to figure out, am I called to this place? The Lord said, I'm going to cause the doors to open for you one by one. He said, there's decision that you're trying to make and you're trying to answer. But he said, I'm God. I'm the God of peace and I'm the God of all knowing. He said, I'm going to position you in the right place at the right time. He said, you're trying to gather things to figure out, is it me? Is it is it God? Is it you? And the Lord said, it is me calling you to the forefront front. You've been in the back too long. But he said, I'm going to provide. I heard you say, Lord, if you would just provide, I will go. The Lord said, I'm going to open the door for you. He said, I'm going to open the door, but I silence the noise that's in your head. And I bring peace and comfort to you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is a, I believe it's Yari spelled with an N. This is what I heard the Spirit of God say. Daughter, I have called you to be a word of revival, a message of hope, a spirit of life. Everywhere you go, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. The Lord says you are a very evangelistic. Everywhere you go, you testify and share of the great work in which Christ has done in your life. I hear the Spirit of God say, you are moving in the realm of the spirit of prophecy. The Bible says, Revelation 1910, the testimony of Christ Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Every where you go, lives will be touched, hearts will be changed, and many will be saved as you share the testimony of Christ. Everywhere you go, you are a Kairos moment. You are a suddenly bringing the revelation of Christ to life, and many will be saved. Continue to preach, continue to open your mouth, and testify, and see the world around you get transformed. For I have anointed you for this purpose. Walk in it and see the lost be found, says the Spirit of God. I heard the name Robert. I heard a name Robert. The Lord said that Robert, come out where you're hiding. Come out of the hiding place. Come out. He said, ready or not, here I come. I come knock at your door, not once but twice, but I come again. And he said, today, son, I bring you out of the place of frustration into a brighter day. He said, you found yourself in a place of depression and anxiety, but today I bring you to a place of fulfillment and great joy. He said, the world had pulled on you. But today I draw you close to my throne room. He said, today I break the shackles and the change of despair off of your life and bring you to a place of freedom. I don't know who Robert is. I don't know if it's a Robert watching or a Robert sitting here, but I, I keep hearing Robert, Robert. Hallelujah. You know, that's my name, but I'm just messing with you. This young man in the gray front row, will you just stand? I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, I am called you to be a Joseph, not only a dreamer of dreams, but the Lord says, a man that has been called by God to obtain wealth. He says, the Joseph anointing is not just to dream, but it's to interpret. You are going to begin to move, not just in dreams, but the word of wisdom. The word of wisdom is different than the word of knowledge because wisdom reveals the thing. Excuse me, the word of knowledge reveals the thing, but the word of wisdom brings a solution to a problem. God says you're going to be used as a solution to many problems. You will find yourself in 2 Kings chapter 2. And the Bible says in verse 19, the men of the city said to Elijah, the situation of the city is pleasant as my Lord sees, but the water is bad and the ground is barren. And a man of God said, bring me a new bowl and put salt in it. And the man went to the source of the problem and cast the salt in. God says, you're the salt that I'm throwing into the difficult place, but you're going to cause that which is dead to come to life, that which was producing death and barrenness to bring forth life. You're a messenger of life. You are a word of wisdom that will be spoken to many, and you will bring solutions to problems in businesses and businessmen, and you will cause them to rise to another level. The prophetic level, the prophetic anointing.
anointing is going to level up in your life, not only with dreams, but with visions. And then suddenly out of your belly, the word of the Lord will fountain and what you speak will be true. Believe it, step into it, release it, and watch me move in your life miraculously, says the Spirit of God. Ah. Evangelist Diga, I, last time I was here, I remember telling you that I saw Asia pulling on you, did not even realize that today that it was translated into, uh, into a book. I want to remind you of the word of the Lord. The Lord said that not only the book will go to Asia, but I will send you there and I will cause things to happen there. The Lord said buildings and buildings upon buildings shall come to you. He said you will hold conferences in other parts of the world. And the Lord said, son, I will unveil the unfolding all. The Lord said as your house is being built, I will cause things to be built in the realm of the spirit. The Lord said, don't forget that I'm building a greater, it's like a, 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 a bigger, a, a, it's like a facility, but it's holding thousands of people to come to, 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 to f- be filled with the Holy Spirit. It's like a big conference room. It's double, double the size. And the Lord said, you're going to begin to buy property after property because I'm going to expand. The Lord said, there are going to be people that come to link up with you. You're going to have other sons that come under you. He said, you will be one that release the prophetic gift and the anointing of the Holy Ghost of the Holy Spirit in them and they will flourish. I see people coming along. I see people pardoning. I see a building upon building. Like architect, you sit around going to different places, building campuses. Crazy, crazy. Crazy. Right where you are, uh, Patrick, there's a lady with her hands in her hair, right? Just come towards me, towards me, towards me. She's wearing glasses right there. Will you stand? This is what I heard the Spirit of God say. He says, you're in the season of Jacob. When Jacob was in a season, he began to run, and there has been a run away from. But the Lord says, I'm about to bring you to a certain place, which means a place of intercession. The Lord says, daughter, have I not brought you to a place of intercession? Have I not brought you to a place of prayer? He says, it's your time to lay your head upon the rock, and behold, I'm going to give you a dream. But this dream is not of an end. It's of a new beginning. The Lord says, your difficult place is going to become the gateway of heaven. The Lord says, look again at what you saw is impossible. Look again is what you thought was difficult. It's actually the gateway to heaven. When I give you this dream, suddenly you're going to expand. You're going to see from a greater perspective and know that I am with you. Not only am I with you, I am with your family and your seed seed. I'm about to touch the generations and set them at liberty. I send forth my word to deliver them. with the glasses on right here toward the end where the wall at right here with the peach I mean I can't hardly see you yes could you please stand this season of frustration the Lord is driving it out right now lift your hands the season of frustration the Lord is driving out right now tears of joy tears of miracle are falling from your face The Lord said, daughter, I saw you sitting on your couch. You were asking God, Lord, could you work the situation out? It's too hard to bear. And the Lord said, daughter, I come today. I come today to bring hope to you. I come to pull the veil off of your eyes to see, to see clear. The Lord said today, of all the longings in your heart for your husband, your family. He said, I bring healing to you right now. I bring restoration to you right now. He said, I will touch his heart and I will cause him to be whole. He said, not one will be lost, but they will all be found. He said, I'm the creating miracle God. That miracle is just for you today. Wow. Jesus. This couple, this pastoral couple, will you two stand in the front row? I heard the Lord say, great things come in small packages. Mm. And he says, right now, it might seem like you, you, it might seem like the facility you're in is small, but great things are about to come. He says, it's been a season where everything has been withheld, but the word of the Lord is going forth and the word of the Lord is breakthrough. I heard the spirit of God saying, I'm about to break through, move you into a new building. I'm about to move you into a new place. I'm about to stretch out your pet tank, your pet, your tent page and move you into a new realm. The Lord says, get ready. There is going to be a slight city shift, but in the shifting of the city, you're going to reach 
reach more community and you're going to minister to more people than you thought possible. The Lord says, I have called you to be a man of success, but the greatest success is going to be this. You're going to take a people that are downcast, broken, lost, and sorrowful, but like David, you're going to take those that are in debt, desperate, and full of sorrow, and you're going to make them the mighty men of God. Get ready, says the Lord. You're going to raise up a company of sons that are going to hear the cry that come out of the out of the crying of a longing king who says, oh, how your, how your servant desires the waters of the wells of Bethlehem, and the three mighty men will break through and bring you the offering. I hear the Spirit of God say, get ready when these men break through and give it to you. Your heart's desire, the heart's cry, you'll pour it out unto the Lord. The Lord says, what makes you mighty is your willingness to give unto me, to anoint the head of a king that I might bring a movement amongst your company. Get ready. Your house is expanding. The city is changing. There is a reformation taking place. Great things come in small packages. And I heard the Lord say, daughter of Zion, you are a great worshiper and a great intercessor. You are a tremendous dreamer. And the dreams that are coming out of you are of expansion and growth. You're seeing things change into a new place. God says, get ready. What you dreamt will come by, by this next year. You will begin to see by August all the glorious fruit that comes. Did I not promise it? I said it in motion. Rejoice, 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 says the Spirit of God. Oh. Now, you, you don't know them. <laughs> uh, you've never met them. I'm glad you haven't. These are my friends, David and Malia. I just went to go preach for you. When was it? About a month ago. And I went there specifically to help them raise the funds for their new facility. So everything, I, I'm telling you, I know them personally. Everything you're saying is dead on. The lady on the end right here with the striped jacket on. Yes. Uh. You're a woman that brings joy everywhere you go. Laughter, smile. Even now she's smiling. People wants to be around you. Even when things are not going good, you're still smiling. The Lord said you bring joy. You bring hope. You bring such a freshness to people around you. The Lord said in the next season, I'm going to cause some things to happen for you. I'm going to cause a hand of blessing to be in front of you. The Lord said, I'm going to position you in your job. I'm going to cause promotion to come to you. You said, I've been stepped over and stepped around. But the Lord said, daughter, I'm going to favor you in the job. He said, I'm going to send finances your way and I'm going to overwhelm you with my very goodness. He said, this is a season where I'm going to cause massive breakthrough because you let your light shine everywhere you go, everywhere you walk. And he said, you show the world how good I am. And I'm about to show you how good I am to you and your house. Hallelujah. There's a lady that looks like she's wearing a jean jacket with blonde hair combed over to the side right here about five rows. Yes, your hand's on you. Stand right there. No, 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 no. Yep. Stand. Perfect. This is what I heard the Spirit of God. He said, everything is about to drop into place for where I'm taking you next. This last season, everything seemed to be, you've been catching the light right as it's turning yellow to red. And you're like, oh, I don't know if I should go. I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, just because it's yellow, it means slow. Proceed with caution. I heard the Spirit of God say, do not be afraid to accelerate in this season. You have been one that has tended to move towards caution. But I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, this is your take it by force season. You are a warrior in prayer. You are a word that makes a difference. And God says, this is the season where the light is suddenly changing. It may have been yellow and it should be red but I'm turning it green. The Lord says, I'm causing the lap car to get out of the way and it's your time to accelerate. The Lord says, not only will you accelerate, you will begin to see the favor and the blessing upon those in whom you touch. The spirit of prophecy is, is deep within your heart and it's deep within your mouth. And when you open up and share scriptures, you're revealing the goodness of God. I heard the spirit of the Lord say, the goodness of God that comes out of your mouth will lead many unto repentance. The word of the Lord to you is bring many into the kingdom for this is the hour of salvation. Be not afraid to share, to testify, and to speak what I've deposited in your heart so many will be transformed. Use your words to bring life to a situation. Use your words to end the storm and bring forth victory into the lives of those in whom you love. I set it in motion. Rejoice this day, says the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Vanessa, st stand up, Vanessa, right here. Said in the last season, you have laid some things down 
to run after. The Lord said, as you ran after the prophet and you asked, could I get in these classes and then God, would you provide? And the Lord said, didn't I not provide for you? He said, in the midnight hour, I'm going to open your ears to hear. I'm going to open your heart to hear. I'm going to open your mind to receive. The Lord said, daughter, today I come in the service and I come to whisper to you that this is the day and the moment that I will show my goodness and I will put your steps in order for you. The Lord said, get ready in the next season of your life. I will cause your schooling to progress. I will cause you to excel and accelerate. He said, not only in school, but in finances. He said, you will be a giver. You will be sowing and sowing and sowing that you will reap a great harvest. He said, daughter, didn't I not tell you that I will gather up your mother and your father and I will cause them to come back to a place of worship. They will worship with you. They will sing with you. I will cause my daughters and my son to come in oneness. If I will save one in the house, I will save the entire house. He said, your season of breakthrough your season of breakthrough is in front of you. In front of you, hallelujah. Now, before, before we continue here, I see some people hesitating as they're on their way out. So we, what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep going, but I'm gonna officially dismiss if you absolutely need to go. All I ask is that not everybody leave all at once because then it's kind of distracting. So if you have to go, just kind of trickle out, watch the room, make sure that not everyone's leaving at once. But we're gonna keep going here tonight because I know there's that most of you will stay because you're hungry for it. But I know there's also people in here who have work tomorrow and you're wondering if you're gonna get called out or something like that. So don't all go at once, but just trickle out. God bless you. Well, there's somebody online and your name is Mary Alanis. And this is what I heard the Spirit of God say. Mary, Mary, let your heart not be contrary. The day of things coming against you and making you feel like you're losing ground is over. For the Lord said, did I not call you to step out of the boat like I did unto Peter? And he says, and because I called you, I won't let you fail. You may feel like you're sinking, but I will raise you up and I will give you the power to endure. The Lord says, this is the season to stand strong, knowing that I will bring you through. For I will begin to build a faith and a confidence in you where you will not look back, but you will look ahead. For the day of feeling overwhelmed to the day of feeling like you can't it comes to an end for surely you are not going to sink you're going to rise the spirit of the Lord says I'm putting a fresh anointing upon your head and I am causing you to ascend even as David was anointed the Bible says he was anointed and he moved forward from that day I hear the spirit of the Lord say this is your day to move forward and the word forward in the Hebrew simply is a word that means to be lifted up and over God says not only are you going through you're going over and you're coming into the place that I promised for everything that stood against you is now over. A new season has begun. Rejoice for the promise is manifesting tonight, says the Lord. The, the lady with the red shirt on, you right here. Yes, you. There's such a gift of writing inside of you to bring things to light. The Lord said, I'm going to give you eyes to see. I'm going to give you it's like you have eyes and, and, and senses to see things in the realm of the spirit. The Lord said, I'm going to begin to unlock the very thing that you're seeing. The Lord said, you've been dreaming and dreaming how this thing going to unfold. But the Lord said, daughter, I'm going to bring you to a place of entrepreneurship. I see like entrepreneurship businesses, look, the Lord opened businesses up for you. And the Lord said, he's going to unveil and unfold. You're going to be writing things and translating things and, and, and bringing them to a different language and different cultures and different things. But the Lord said, because I gifted you, not with one gift, but many talents. And the Lord said, I'm going to begin to multiply them because you have a heart of a servant and he said the greatest in the kingdom is the servant he said daughter you're called to be a servant and I'm going to unveil the very gift that who you are you're going to begin to serve others through I, I don't know just writing things and translating things and doing things outside of the box I just it's just weird weird stuff wet how I see it <laughs> crazy there's a young lady in the brown first row far right will you stand yes this is what I heard the Spirit of God say. 
He says, the day of being so closed and closely guarded is over. There is a season because of disappointment, you built a wall to protect yourself. But what the wall has done is now kept you out for what you desire. And I heard the spirit of the Lord say, like the walls of Jericho, I'm about to cause them to be compacted and fall flat. These walls will now become a bridge in which you will cross over. The Lord says you'll cross over into new relationships, new lands, new territories. And in these places, you will see yourself excel. The Lord says, this is your get in the game season. You were a checker that was put on the side for a season, but I brought you back into the game, crown side up with greater mobility and a greater wisdom and understanding. The day of hurt, pain, and disappointment is over. The day of new beginnings is here. Cross over into all that I promise. For surely you will not fail, but you will rejoice in the joy that I have given you. It's a brand new season, says the Lord. This gentleman in the yellow, this is what I heard the Spirit of God say. You're wearing the Bass Pro, Pro hat. Yeah, he didn't even hear me. Hey, brother, this is what I heard the Spirit of God say. He says, this is your season to catch a big one. He says, this is your season to land it. This is the season to see the net of God begin to bring forth the harvest. He says, you are a voice of evangelism, a word of encouragement. You are a strong hand to those that are weak, and you will cause them to rise to another level. I'm about to put my message on your tongue, and when you open your mouth, your mouth will drip like honey and the Lord says and you will cause the countenance of those that are downcast to suddenly be brightened and be strong you are a word of strength a word of hope you are a voice of evangelism that will bring many into my kingdom open your mouth and drip honey open your mouth and prophesy and see many lives healed delivered and set free I set it in motion for you at another level this day says the Spirit of God the guy with the black shirt on right here in the middle yes you could you please stand Today is the day of overflow for your life. The Lord said, I'm going to begin to mend the bridges together. I'm going to cause the overflow to be upon you. The Lord said, it's been a season where you needed rest, and he's going to call rest to come upon you. You said, I'm tired. I'm tired. I just need to rest. And the Lord said, you're going to enter into a season of my rest. He said, an overflow. He said, son, you have worked and worked, but you haven't felt rest. But he said, the day and to, even tonight, you're going to sleep well. You're going to lay and you're going to wake up in the morning refresh and the Lord says son you're going to know that I visit you I came to you and you said I need you to restore some things in my life and this, the Lord said I heard you when you even spoke them not only I'm going to give you rest but I'm going to restore everything that was lost everything that was taken away and I will cause you to come to a place of plenty and more I see the Lord overwhelming you and fullness of rest hallelujah Let's, let's, if we can, also, there's a couple people, there's several people actually, lots of people watching online. Uh, I was going online next. Matter of fact, there is a Priscilla Pinto. Priscilla, this is what I heard the Spirit of God say. For surely my goodness and mercy shall come upon you. For this last season, everything has been seemingly frustrating and difficult. There has been a place where you feel like it's hard to serve God in the dimension in which you called. Like Peter, your heart has been downcast. But the Lord says, listen for the crow of the rooster. For the rooster crowing is the sound of a new day. The Lord says, O daughter of Zion, when you hear the rooster cry or crow, you will understand that a brand new day has come. Everything that stood before you will now fall before you. Everything that resisted you will now be removed from you. You will step into the newness of life and great joy will be your portion. I release this into your spirit. Listen for the sound of the trumpet of a new day and when you hear it, rejoice and step into the place that I promise, says the Spirit of God. Okay, this gentleman in the flowered shirt front row, when I first looked at you, yes, can I... When I first looked at you, this is what I heard the Spirit of God say. He says, your outward strength is visible, but he says the inward, uh, the inward heart is amazing. He says, many people don't know that you are a gentleman. Most people don't know that you are marked with kindness, and I saw you like a Snickers bar. You're sweet to the taste, and you leave an imprint on those who grab hold of you. He says, and when people break you, they see an ooey-gooey side of you, but by the natural, when they look, they should not see, but when they taste, 
taste, they will say it is good. God says there is a goodness that is leaving an imprint. There is a mark that's coming on you. And this mark will be given unto a generation and they will be smeared with my goodness. You will deliver them out of the pits. You will remove them from drugs and violence and you will set them at liberty. The Lord says you have a passion for people that are hurting and living in the street life. For those that are in violent places filled with darkness, you are a hand that will go into them and pull them out. For you will find yourself in the book of Psalms. For the word of God says, I will deliver a people out of the miry pit, set their feet upon the rock and establish their ways. God says, you are a voice that is foundational and you'll establish the ways of God to cause a people to prosper and to ascend to another level. Rejoice for this is the season where I'll send you the company that will become the mighty in my name, says the Spirit of God. The young man right here in the front, you, yes, you, could you stand? I'm looking at you, you look like a young man that would be a, a person like YouTuber that, that would do pranks on, on YouTube and, and, and do different kinds of, different kinds of things because the Lord have created you uniquely. Many times you've been passed by, set aside, but the Lord said today, I come today to remind you of a call. He said, you will cause young men to gather and come to a place of a new generation. He said, you will be one that calls evangelism to come out of your mouth and draw young men to me. The Lord said, inside of you, there's a preacher anointing over you. He said, but you found yourself in the place of the wilderness. He said, today, come out of the place of dryness and walk into the place of freshness. The Lord said, not only you're going to walk into a place of freshness, but I see you going on YouTube. I see you uh, making your own YouTube videos and causing success to come to you. The Lord says, son, put it into action and watch and see that I cause your hand to be blessed. He said, I will put creative ideas inside of you. He said, even when you were passed by, I saw you, I saw you working on the web. I saw you coming up with creative ideas. I saw you putting things in motion. And you said, I don't know if I want to do that, but the Lord says, son, go back and do it because I'm going to cause your hand to be blessed. I'm going to cause the fruit to come to you and I'm going to multiply. I'm going to multiply it. Hallelujah. Online, there is a Mark Romano. I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, the bell of liberty is about to go off in your territory. I'm going to release a sound that's going to bring forth a liberation to those in whom you love. For the Spirit of the Lord says, there is a sound of revival, a sound of liberation. The Bible says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. God says, where you go, you carry a Kairos presence. The suddenlies of God will manifest. Get ready to lay hands on a people that are in need, and liberty will come. Get ready to speak a word to those that are bound and liberty will come for surely I will cause you to be an outstretched hand and a spoken word that will cause people's life to be propelled out of darkness into the glorious light for surely I've anointed you for this purpose rejoice for my hand is upon you says the Spirit of God says Sarah a Sarah is a Sarah in here a Sarah I heard Sarah but this is what I heard I heard a Sarah the Lord say your name means your, your name means blessing. And the Lord says, Sarah, the season that seems overwhelming, the Lord said, I bring you to a place of blessing. I bring you out of this place where it seems frustration and darkness been surrounded all around you. But he said, I bring you to a place of goodness. My face shines upon you. My eyes gaze on you. And he said today that I'm going to bring you into a new day, a new day of my anointing, a new day of fresh fire. The Lord said, you've been in a place where your bones, but I hear like a rattling sound sound, a rattling sound of the bones coming together. He said, your bones was dry, but now they come alive. He said, get up and pick up. He said, begin to walk and walk and begin to speak and prophesize life to your dry bones and cause them to come alive. Cause them to come alive. So before Prophet Rob, before you continue, I want to say to those of you watching online, we Jesus. so love you and we pray that the anointing that's present here would touch you right there where you are in your home. Can we just take a moment to pray for those online? Father, in the name of Jesus, touch each one, I pray, according to their faith. And I pray, Lord, that your presence and power would be evident in their homes. In the name of Jesus, we pray. You're watching online and you haven't subscribed yet, make sure that you subscribe and click that notification bell when you do so that you can receive notices whenever we release new content. You'll be saying, are they gonna give me a word? We have to close it on the online thing. There's some, uh, as I said, we have to usually close the online before we close the actual service for many reasons. But I do wanna say to you, you're important to us and we love you. And this is why I work so hard to involve you. 
But you wanna stay connected with us, make sure you are subscribed because that's how you're gonna receive notices when we go live. That's how you're gonna know when we release new content. And God is going to bless your life through Encounter TV, I just know it. You're not watching this by accident. So click that subscribe button, click that notification bell. And until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. God bless you. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph